Life could be a dream. Life could be a dream. Hello and welcome to my workshop. Before we make up the rocking horse kit, I'd like to look at some techniques and procedures that we can use to produce stained and polished wooden surfaces in miniature. We're working with a bishi wood today. Working on a scrap piece of paper, take the kitchen paper towel, the cabinet maker's sandpaper, the abronette and the tags. On the first tag, just write a number one in the corner. On the second tag, you need to rub it across the cabinet maker's sandpaper, working with the grain of the wood several times. And then write a number two on that tag. The third tag needs to be taken across the abronet, and the abronet is positioned furry side down, and again the wood is rubbed across the abronet with the grain of the wood several times. Write a number three on that tag. Then taking the kitchen paper towel, just rub tag two and tag three just to remove the dust. And then with your finger, just feel the difference between tag one, which is untreated, tag two has been taken across the sandpaper, and tag three has been taken across the abronet. And you'll feel already that the abronet has really smoothed that wooden surface before we've started doing anything. Abronet another two of the remaining tags. Number that one four. And then number this one five. And as before, just rub over them with the kitchen paper towel to remove the dust. Just set the tags aside now. Just tap the abronet on the paper, you'll see that there's dust under there. And just fold it up like that, just so that the dust is trapped inside and then put that in the bin. Stain the tags using either a spirit or a water-based wood stain. You can either apply using a paintbrush or a cloth. I'm actually using a stain pen which has got a spirit based stain in it. Always apply with the grain of the wood and um, if you're using a paintbrush or a cloth actually apply quite sparingly because too much stain can warp the wood. Once the wood stain is dried set tag one aside and tags four and five. Using the piece of kitchen towel, take tags two and three and just rub over the surface with the kitchen towel, backwards and forwards with the grain of the wood. And you'll notice as you rub the wood, it will start to smooth it down and a soft sheen will be produced. Compare tags one, two and three. And notice how using the kitchen towel on top of the stained wooden surfaces has really smoothed the wood and actually produced a soft dull sheen. And you'll notice that tag 3 is a lot smoother than definitely than tag 1 and 2 because you've used the abronet first of all. Take tags 4 and 5. Tag 4 can just be set aside for now. Tag number 5 needs to be abronetted again. So just gently rub it across the top of the surface of the abronet backwards and forwards. If necessary, it does need to be restained, you can do so now. Once tag 5 is dry again, put a little bit of the finishing wax on the kitchen paper towel and just rub across tags 4 and tag 5. You don't need to put an awful lot on it, we'll just very nicely soak up into the wood. And we just need to leave that to dry just for several minutes. Using the clean part of the kitchen towel, Put tags 4 and 5 to a sheet. Lay the tags out in front of you and look and feel the difference that each technique has given you. To recap, tag 1 was left untreated and just stained. Tag 2 was taken over the cabinet maker's sandpaper and then we buffed it with the kitchen paper towel. Tag 3 was taken over the abronet first of all, stained and then buffed with the kitchen towel. Tag 4 we abronetted, stained and waxed and then buffed it to a sheen. Tag 5, we did exactly the same things again but we abronetted it twice once after it had been stained and you'll feel that tag 5 is a lot smoother and has a very nice soft sheen to it. Before we begin making up the rocking horse kit you need to make yourself a sanding tool. 
Cut a piece of sandpaper which is big enough to wrap around the dowel. It doesn't want to overlap, just meet at the edges. Apply tacky glue to the back of the sandpaper and then wrap around the dowel and just hold it for a couple of minutes just so that it's nice and secure. You now need to prepare the surfaces of the wooden pieces. You can use either the sandpaper or the abronet, whichever way you preferred to do it last time. Now, laser cut wood unfortunately leaves a burnt or a coloured edge and if you're going to use a dark coloured wood stain you can probably get away without sanding that off but if you want to use a light coloured wood stain you're going to actually need to sand away that coloured edge. So you can see if you get your sandpaper and just rub it along just very carefully it begins to take away the dark brown. You can see that there on when the sandpaper. When you come to an area that's a little bit awkward use the sanding tool that we made before and it will just make it a little bit easier to get inside. Once you've prepared your wood pieces, you can then stain and polish them as we did before. Now that the pieces are all stained and polished, take the template and lay the legs Apply on top. Apply some glue to the top of the legs and then lay the horse on top so that it's on top of the template so that it's in the right position. You might need a little bit of manoeuvring. and just leave that to dry. Once that's dry, turn the horse over and do the same on the opposite side. Whilst the glue dries, take the rockers. If you look at the rockers, you can see that there's a little line in the centre of the rocker. Just apply a little bit of glue on top of both of them. And these can be joined using one of the slats. So position that on top there. Just hold it for a minute and then take the other rocker. It is a little bit fiddly. Once you've got it, you'll know when you've got it right. And then just leave that to dry. Position and glue another of the slats on each side of the central slat, leaving a gap of approximately the width of the slat, and just leave that to dry. Position a little bit of glue onto the end of each front leg, and then position and glue a slat centrally in place. You just need to leave that to dry for a minute and then repeat the procedure at the back of the horse. Once the glue's dried, just add a little bit of glue onto the underside of each of the slats and then very carefully position it on top of the rockers. There we are. And leave to dry. Thread and glue the handle through the hole in the body of the horse. Take the tail and on the flat side just add a little bit of glue and position onto the back of the rocking horse. You may need to hold it just for a little while for it to hold and glue into place. Position and glue the top of the saddle centrally on top of the horse. And you're just going to need to leave that just for a minute just to catch before taking the saddle sides, just a little bit of glue on one side and positioning immediately underneath the saddle and do the same on the other side. And there you have a completed rocking horse. I hope that you're pleased with your rocking horse. Thank you for joining in with my workshop.